<laughs> well, Petri and Makita, we are making a habit of this. And I've got to say, that's not a bad thing, don't you reckon? No, there's, there, there's, some, there's some good habits. This, this is one of them. Now, when last we spoke, you shared some really super exciting news because, Petri, not only are you returning to television, but you're also re-teaming with Judge Judy. Okay, well, I don't want to disillusion folks. So so here's the deal. I'm sort of uh, reunited with Judge Judy in that I am on a Judge Judy produced production uh, called Tribunal, which is a, um, um, it's a court show with three judges. Um, uh, so Judge Judy is not one of the judges, but I'm, I'm really, really close because her son, Adam, is one of the three judges on that uh, program. Who are the other judges? Ah, the other judges are uh, Tanya Acker and Patricia Domingo, which if, uh, if, if those names ring a bell, uh, they were formerly two of the judges on Hot Bench, another Judge Judy production. So <laughs> she's, so, so, so the Queen Bee is, is, is sort of uh, shifting the, the pieces on the chessboard uh, you know, to the advantage of, uh, of her production company. But the thing is, Judge Judy or Judith Scheindlin has created Tribunal and she's executive producing Tribunal. So in effect, right. our, the band is back together in many respects, <laughs> That's right. except she's just not in that hot seat, as it were, yeah. as yeah, the yeah, judge. Yes, yes, all the stones are back together, but uh, but Mick Jagger is uh, hold, uh, holding out. He's, he's still going solo. <laughs> now, you mentioned the fact, Petri, of um, three judges. Until now, you've always been, at least in TV land, a one-judge bailiff. Uh, How's that going to work where now you are a three-judge bailiff? Well, you, you, you're going to love this part. I'm, I'm going to give you a little, a little additional information that only you will know, okay? Um, wow. there Thank is you. A, there, there is another bailiff on the show. They decided that they needed two bailiffs, um, you know, uh, to do half as much work. So, so, so uh, 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 Cassandra uh, Britt is, is the other, is the other bailiff on our show. And um, between the two of us, uh, I, I think mostly we were trying to uh, keep each other alert during the, uh, during the proceedings, <laughs> which take three times as long as they ever did with Judge Judy. Uh, because you have three judges who, you know, must cross-examine to a, 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 a intensive extent, you know, each litigant. And, and, then, and then after that, go out for deliberations. So it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty daunting uh, uh, type of situation. Uh, it's, it's very different for me. So Petra, you've actually started recording Tribunal already, I understand. Yes. Mm-hmm. We are coming down to our last three days of taping, and then we'll have a full season in the can, uh, raring to go whenever they decide to uh, um, to uh, uh, show it. It's going to be on uh, the same network that Judge Judy's on, which which is uh, Freebie Television, uh, which is part of Amazon Prime. And are there any cases that are really quite fabulous? I mean, that have even surprised you, <laughs> knocked your socks off, as they might say. The, well, there, there, there are there are probably some cases, and and I don't really feel at liberty to tell you about them. However, what I what I can tell you is that these three judges have three distinct personalities in regards to how they question. The litigants, uh, uh, and and people will be quite surprised, I think, at Judge Adam, Adam Levy, who is Judge Judy's son. Uh, they will be surprised at how much he's like her, but he is he is what I call Columbo. He is the investigative guy. You know, uh, he will ask a question that is so far left of what the case is about. You know, you know. He'll look and he'll go, September 12th, 1973. Does that ring a bell? Hmm? Does that ring a bell? And the person is standing there looking like, what has what, what this got to do with my dog getting bit by their dog? You know, you know? <laughs> you know? I, all I know is 
that every time he starts his questioning, everybody in the courtroom is like this. You know, like it's it's. Is where he, are you going with this? Where, where you go? Where are you going with this? You know. And, Does Judge so, Judy visit the set much? Is Judge Judy on set when these are being taped? Um, you know what? The the first the first say couple of weeks that we taped, um, she would she would show up sporadically, and then uh, I I I think she kind of looked and went, I, I think he's got it, so no need for me to be here. And we tape on alternate weeks for uh from from her show, you know. So, because uh, because we use we we fundamentally use the same set, you know. So, um, I'm sorry, we use the same stage. They they take out they take out the the tribunal set and they they bring in the uh, the Judy Justice set and and then they take for three days or two or three days and then we we alternate. So that's bad. Now, Makita, are you involved in this? No, I'm currently like working on my health. So I don't want to go back to like the grind. That makes total sense because when yes. you talk about your health, it was a couple of years ago that you were diagnosed with a brain tumor. Yep. And I know when we've previously spoken, you stepped me through all of that. Where are you at with your health now? So it's currently going in the right direction. Um, um, I don't have cancer anymore, Yay. but I have, um, radiation necrosis. Oh. So that's like a wildfire in your brain. Mm -hmm. And like, there's like little white dots that, um, are on the MRI. So I have to I have to keep taking, um, prescriptions for that blood thinners and, um, Keppra. And eventually when the white dots go away, <laughs> I won't be going for two months at a time. I mean, you know, it's been for you, for you both, um, a hell of a journey. I know that that Petri has been like your rock, but what's the prognosis? What have your oncologists said? That everything is right now going in the direction uh, that, that he is uh, most happy with and therefore we're most happy with. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, the, the the wildfire that she was speaking of, uh, metaphorically speaking, um, is is dying out. And uh, and so yeah, there's she, just she, embers. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she so she went for her MRI. Um, uh, what a month ago? Yeah, uh, a month Summer. ago now. Yeah, and so uh, she's having these MRIs every two months uh, to to keep an eye on on what's going on. But uh, so far. He's uh, extremely happy and, and extremely well pleased with her progress. You know. Thank, yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Makita, a little birdie tells me just between you, me and the gatepost, you've got a book on the way. Is that right? Yes. It's called A Seizure Saved My Life. Yes. And I just sent it today to the publisher. So yeah. it's your journey through yes. all that you've been through over the Correct. past couple of years. It starts from 2012. Right. You see, you've and, always been so incredibly inspiring and to be yeah. honest and to talk about these things and to do it in the way you do, uh, you probably don't even realise how many people it does encourage and ultimately help. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're I'm excited. But I've got to say, there's such a good energy around you both and that must surely be helping get you through. But also, I mean, you know, Bert, you were just so fabulous on telly and, and so missed when Judge Judy came to an end and then you weren't part of her new chapter. And we've talked about that. But now you're back and that gives more fabulous energy, which is only going to help Makita with, with your recovery as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So many so many positive things are are, are happening. Um uh, career wise and health wise yeah. and otherwise, you know, and spiritually we're, we're in the greatest place that we've ever been yes. and, and, and also closer than we've ever been. Oh. Now, Petra, you look back on your career, essentially in the courts, you know, you've been around them for decades, 25 years on judge Judy, but of course you began uh, in that kind of like legal atmosphere years before that just briefly step me through how that came about but in, in um I, i'll say probably in a night in 1982 1983 
I took the court officer's test in, in, in uh, New York uh, and uh, passed the test. Uh, I, I, I was actually, out of 50,000 applicants, I was like number 374 or something on the written test. Uh, but it took me two and a half years to get the job. Um, every time I turned around, there would be some new hurdle that I'd have to overcome. Uh, you know, at one point they, they had me spend the day with a psychologist because um, my, my psychological report said that I was either an alcoholic or I was a raving maniac. And so I had to go down there and prove to them that I was sane, you know. Um, uh, the, the, the physical agility test, you know, I, I had, I had to take that over. So I had to keep going down, uh, because I, yeah, I wanted this job. I, I thought I deserved this job. And finally, um, there came a point where I actually had to, uh, uh go to an appeals panel, um, consisting of, uh, personnel from the New York state court officers association and, uh, a couple of judges. And I went down and uh, I, I think I expressed myself very well, you know, that I thought I was deserving of the job and they agreed. So they finally gave me the job in 1985. Uh, my first assignment was Brooklyn Family Court. I worked there for a year and maybe, maybe two months. And then I got a transfer. I got transferred over to Manhattan Family Court. Well, it was in Manhattan Family Court, uh, my second rotation because we used to rotate uh, in and out of the parts. Um, the judges' parts there, and um, my second rotation there, I got to work with one Judge Shineland, Judge Judith Shineland, and uh, and then in 1990, uh, I um, I left uh, Manhattan Family Court, moved out to California uh, to reunite with my uh, with my then wife. Uh, we were separated. Uh, but we had we had children together, and in fact, she was pregnant um, uh, during our separation. And so uh, I came out. We reconciled, and uh, God said, "Move west, young man." Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I moved. I moved out to California and uh, worked uh, for the U.S. Marshal Service for three for three years, and then took another turn in my life and uh, became a high school counselor. And it was while as a high school counselor that I read the paper one day, the newspaper. I don't know if people know what that is anymore, <laughs> but uh, I read the newspaper and I read and I was reading Liz Smith's gossip column. And uh, in that gossip column, at the end of the column, it mentioned that a certain uh, family court judge that I was familiar with uh, had written a book and um, uh, was having a TV show developed for her. I wrote uh, Judge Shinelin a letter to congratulate her and jokingly at the end of the letter said, hey, if you ever need a bailiff, I still look good in uniform. Well, she called me about three weeks later to thank me for the letter and to tell me that my joke was sort of prophetic, that they did need a bailiff and uh, um, what I consider uh, actually working with her again. And I was like, you know, heck yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm down, you know. And in uh, July of 1996, we started uh, a 25 year run on Judge Judy. That's called serendipity, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. But that's then, right. much like it is with you and Makita, because obviously your first marriage, uh, that ended. You two meet on the lot of where Judge Judy was to be or was recorded. Is that correct? Yeah. So we first met in 2012 when I moved out here to California. I was working on the lot um, for Jeff Probes. He was working for Judge Judy. I ran into him. I guess he was going to lunch. Now I know that he was going to lunch because he was in his uniform. Jeff Probes of Survivors. Thing. Yes, that's <laughs> it. Um, I said to him, I was like, oh my God, my mother loves you. <laughs> can I take a picture so he said sure why not I took a picture years later 2016 I get the job on Judge Judy and he didn't remember me so he acted like he remembered me no no, no. now you have to take into account uh, I'm I'm a couple of years older than Makita, it may not show. You're 27 years older than me. 
Okay, he's 27 years older than you. Okay, yes, I am. <laughs> and I'm gonna push you in your wheelchair. Oh, okay, okay. okay. down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> when did he suddenly remember you? Like we went on a couple dates, and in 2017, a year later, like he didn't remember me. And you know how Facebook brings up your memories? It does, yes. They posted the posted picture. the picture, and I said, "Aha." I'm gonna show it to him. And he was like, I didn't even change my look. I had the same haircut, just taller, like with heels. But he was married and I had a boyfriend and he wasn't supposed to remember me. Correct. That part. So it is what it is. Now we're in love. That's right. The Lord is my shepherd and I see what I want. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just, you married in 2019. Well, there were three weddings. We had gotten our marriage license here in California, and uh, you have to execute it pretty much within 90 days. Right. Um, uh, we had already set for our official wedding to be in, on the East Coast so that uh, my mother could attend and, and my family on the East Coast could attend. I, I just said, hey, let's do it uh, on my birthday. Uh, 29 is a number. I was that his figures, Yeah, 29 was a, was a, is a number that figures prominently in our lives. Uh, we got married on November 29th of 2018. Right. The second time uh, we got married on the official date that we that we had, you know, with all the guests and all all the fixings and the dress and all all that stuff. And that was uh, March 29th, mm -hmm. four months later. Uh, and then we, we came we, we, we came back to California and, and some friends of ours who have a beautiful home in Pasadena yeah. um, said, hey, wait a minute, you guys were supposed to get married, get married here, here at our house. And so we were like, okay, we made well. made us feel bad. So yeah. we had a, we got hitch party. Right. You yeah. know, speaking of your lucky number being 29, it is a bit of a shame that Judge Judy brought the gavel down on Judge Judy when she did, because you did 25 years. Imagine if she'd let it run for another four, the numbers Listen. would really have lined up. But I mean, still, <laughs> you are in the record books as the longest running TV bailiff in history, which is quite an accolade, isn't it, when you think about it? I, I think I think so. I, th I think longevity in, in any endeavour, you know, is, uh, is a plus, you know. And so I, I, I really... Uh, you know, when people say, well, you know, did, did you know? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm pretty sure nobody knows, you know, that they're going to do 25 years on, on a particular job, you know, and then one day you look up and wow, 25 years is, is, is you're in. Right. <laughs> You know, you know when you invested. think of those 25 seasons, I mean, there were a hell of a lot of crazy cases that went on. Of course, some heartbreaking ones, some very serious ones. For some reason in my mind, I can remember there was a case involving a dog chewing up somebody's dentures. <laughs> well, what do you think is the wildest case that you were ever part of in terms of wow. uh, Judge Judy? I, I just saw one the other day uh, and uh, and it was from 25 years ago. Yes. Um, it was from, it was from our first season. And as, as you may recall, um, Hugh Grant was caught. Well, we had Divine Brown on our show. Yes. And I remember uh, I remember it was so bizarre because the person who was suing her was her manager okay <laughs> and uh, yeah that that was that was that was pretty strange and then there was the time that b arthur was was on our show yes that's right why was she on the show we used to do these they, they weren't really cases they were more like they, they felt like infomercials or something you know but but we used to have sort of these debates that would that would go on in front of the judge you know and it wasn't that she was adjudicating the case. It was just that she was listening to both sides of, of the issue. I just remember standing there watching her and I'm going, you know, that's Maud. That's, that's, that's Dorothy on the Golden Girls. Yeah, that's <laughs> <You know? it. laughs> no, television can be a brutal and, and, and sometimes harsh reality. 25 years on Judge Judy, she brought the gavel down on that. 
gets a new show happening, Justice Judy, and you find you're not part of it. How did it work that you and uh, Judah Shineling came back together again, even though she's not fronting this show? She's the creator, the executive producer, and clearly she had a say in engaging you as one of the two bailiffs uh, on Tribunal. I had accepted my fate. I had accepted that, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's your show, it's your production company, you, you know, you do what you want to. And if you want to go in another direction, that's fine. Um, and and then one fateful Sunday, uh, matter of fact, I never forget which Sunday it was. It was the Sunday of the Oscars where oh, Will, Will Smith, Smith slapped uh, Chris Rock. Chris yeah. Rock. Yep. But before that even happened, before that happened that day, that morning, I looked at my phone and I had a text from Judge Judy Shineland. And uh, it, it was, uh, and the text was inquiring whether I would consider uh, uh, an opportunity to work on a new court show. Um, and so I just text back, um, sure, you know, I'll, 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 I'll listen to anything. Uh, and next thing you know, she had uh, somebody call me. Right. Uh, and so I told him, I said, well, uh, you can go back and tell the powers that be that I, you know, that I will, uh, con I will consider it. And tentatively, my answer is yes. And he says, no, 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 no. I remember he said to me, no, 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 not tentatively. It has to be a definite, definitive, certain yes, you know. And I said, okay, no. And I said bye, and I hung up. And this guy calls back about five times, right? And so finally, when I did answer it, and I think uh, I think I I might have talked to him after the you know after the Will Smith uh, <laughs> fiasco. Yeah, we were getting dressed and going to an Oscar party. Yeah, yeah, you know. And and the guy calls back, and I said, "Listen, here's my rule: there's nothing twenty four hours will not clarify for you. So." You're going to give me at least 24 four hours to think about this. But in the meantime, I'm going to run this by my lawyer. I'm going to run this by my manager. And we'll see. You know, well, what, what should have been, I, I guess he told the powers to be that, oh, I got this sewed up and, and, and I'll have him signed on by the end of the day. Well, two months later, <laughs> two months later, he was still going, look, uh, you got to sign him today. You know, it's like, dude. Relax, okay, <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, you know, in the meantime, it, it, it's funny because during that time, he wouldn't tell me uh, who this new judge was I was going to be working for, or he, he wouldn't tell me what the schedule was, he wouldn't, you know, and I was like, you know, nobody signs on like that, nobody signs on blindly like that, you know, the last time that, the last time that happened, uh, Kim Basinger was signing on for boxing Helena and 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 wound up losing an eight uh, eight million dollar lawsuit because she she blindly said yeah I'll do it you know so um, that that's that's how it all transpired uh, that that's how that's how the band got back together rough there you go so we we'll see how it uh, how it turns out you know and in the meantime you know some other things have come up and uh, some other opportunities have come up that uh, that that I, you know, get to stretch my acting muscles. So tell me about I, those. I did an episode. I did a, a guest spot on uh, uh, Law and Order. Yeah. SVU. Wow. Um, yes. Had a great had a great time doing that. Uh, yes. I, I played a small town uh, police chief uh, on 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 that. Um, I am currently involved in a uh, six part miniseries. Um, about the Donald Sterling um, uh, L.A. Clippers fiasco yes. um, uh, called the Sterling Affairs, yes. and that's due to premiere sometime this year on FX. Uh, and um, and oh, <laughs> I love this part. Um, so uh, I was given the opportunity to do a voiceover job for Disney on a show called The Proud Family. And uh, the role that I'm playing is Judge Bird. And my course. wife is my wife is good from ear to ear because she got a chance to hear. There's a theme song. It's on YouTube to to the Judge Bird show, you know. And so I was like, well, wait a minute, you know, hmm, hmm. 
maybe I do get that promotion. <laughs> oh, yes. And I love this. I love from time to time hopping onto YouTube and, and watching your Bonding with Bird live stream show. For those who've not caught up with it, you can find it on YouTube. You're, you're hilarious. You're poignant. You're honest. You're just both you. Um, is that going to be part of your 2023 schedule or Makita, are you really focusing more on your health at this point? No, in time? no, 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 no. We're bringing that back because Good. we went on a um, hiatus that you call yes. it um, because we were supposed to come back in September, but his schedule with tribunal was like getting in the way. So we yes. couldn't do it like on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. Yes. Sometimes he will be there. Sometimes he won't, but I just said, Hey, let's just call it quits. After you do the show, we'll bring it back. So hopefully like in February, right? Which is yeah. right around the corner. Um, Petri, is there an air date slated yet for Tribunal? They they haven't told me yet uh, when, when it's due to premiere. You know, I it, it's it's anybody's guess. Uh, I, I heard at one point July, but mm -hmm. oh, okay. you know that that may that may or may not be true. Um, I, I think I think part of their part of their situation though is that um, uh, Hot Bench. Which was which they had anticipated not being renewed by CBS. Well, that got renewed, yes. and once that got renewed, now now She's Tribunal, right. which was supposed to be the successor, is now in competition with its predecessor. Yes. So you know it's, it's you know it's 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 sort of like it's sort of like two Will Smiths in different times meeting in the same place you know yep, uh, I got what you. happens what happens to the world then <laughs> now i told you petri that there was um a question from a viewer in iceland <laughs> what? i know <laughs> she noticed that you wear a a blue ring and wondered if there was some kind of significance to that in fact this is the crazy part and and this viewer will will appreciate it um, when, when, when she sees the answer to this, mm -hmm. um, uh, that, so first of all, that, that ring was given to me by a gentleman in Sacramento. He was a friend of a friend and we, all, we were all having lunch and I looked and, and, and I love turquoise, you know? And so he had on a, he had on a, a, a turquoise ring when we went to lunch and I just looked and I said, man, I said, I, I really love that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a ring like that, you know, uh, where'd you get it? And he told me that he got it in Arizona. And so probably like a week later, two weeks later, uh, I got a call from my friend saying, Hey, uh, uh, th this gentleman wants us to have lunch together and he wants to make sure that you're there. So I said, okay, fine. We went to lunch and when we went to lunch, he handed me a box. And in the box was a, uh, a bracelet, a turquoise bracelet and the ring that I had admired so much at, at lunch two weeks before. Um, and so I started wearing the ring and I would wear it all the time on Judge Judy. And I became so known for the ring uh -huh. that when I went to visit her grandfather, her 90 year old grandfather in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> uh, I, I, I went up to his door. I happened, I just happened to be in the neighborhood. I know that sounds crazy. Yeah, I just have to be in Texas. But I went up to his door uh, unannounced, uh, knocked on the door. He opens the door and there's a screen in front of us. Now, uh, he can see me, but I can't see him through the screen. And he says, you know, but I recognize his voice. And he says, hello. And I go, hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, Bob, you know, this is uh, this is your your granddaughter's husband. <laughs> and he goes, Bird? I go, yeah. He says, show me the ring. <laughs> and I put my hand up and I showed him the ring. And he goes, oh, come on in. Have a beer. <laughs> you know? So True that's story. So that, yeah, story. yeah. So that's wow. how that's how well known this ring became. You know, oh, because whenever I would call people down, and and this was uh, I, I, this was the motion, I would go parties on, step forward, and I would just do like that. Well, yeah. that became known throughout the world, and yeah. as you see in Iceland, where's the ring? You know, now the bad news, Iceland, is that when 
Judge Judy finished when we fin we finished April fifteenth. Yeah. Our last day was April fifteenth of twenty twenty one. Right. Yes. I have not seen the ring since then. Where did it go? I think it's somewhere here in the house. But you know what it's probably waiting for? It's probably waiting for me to become Judge Bird and say, <laughs> step into my courtroom and I'll have the ring. Oh my gosh, I just absolutely love that story. Makita, look, there's a question for you whilst I'm, um, I'm, I'm figuring through all these questions that I've got for both of you. Uh, and that is um, Bailiff Bird on Judge Judy could sometimes seem a little bit grumpy. What is the real Bailiff Bird like at home? Is he sometimes, as she writes, this is from the UK, by the way, a little bit grumpy? There are times that he could be grumpy, right? Without any reason. And I'm like, but that's only like 5% of the time. 95% of the time, he's a jokester. He jokes around too much. Does that make sense? It he's does. just like nonstop. His nickname is nonstop. All parties on Smith versus Jones step forward. The, the secret, the secret to our marriage is twice a week, we 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 go out, we have a great dinner, a fantastic time, uh, you know, make love, and you know, um, you know, I go on Tuesday, she goes on Thursday. <laughs> 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 you know, for those thinking uh, that, you know, um, Petri, you've got the most fabulous sense of humour. You work so well together, of course. Little known fact, but I mean, as a little kid, you were doing impersonations of all sorts of people like Flip Wilson and mm -hmm. Dean Martin and everybody. And, and, and it, it, it continues to now. It, it continues to now, you know. Now, now is, is, is most of the time is, is different singers and, uh, you know, uh, I, I I just impersonate anybody who who I think has a distinctive, wonderful voice. You know? Who's your favorite um, at the moment? Who do you like impersonating? My favorite will always be Archie Bunker. Uh, uh, for some for some reason, it doesn't matter what generation it is. It doesn't matter what color they are, or yes. what country they're from. Everybody recognizes Archie Bunker there uh, because uh, he's a veteran where you call the WW2, the big one. Stifle yourself over there, read it. <laughs> <laughs> you see the fan from Iceland? You see? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Wait, wait. No, no you'll, lo you'll love this. You'll love this. And, and you'll love it. I don't know who else will love it. But, um, I, I, I did an audition the other day. I, I get these auditions uh, in my email. And, um, and the voice that they asked me to do was one that years ago, years ago, I won a contest doing this person's voice. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. And so this is what I had to do for this audition. I had to say that I had to make sure that they understood the pudding pops and make sure that the pudding pops was puddings. So, Bill Cosby. <laughs> yes, yes. And 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 I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that this was being required in this audition. But I was like, yo, if there's anything I got a shot at, <laughs> when I saw that they, they, they wanted a Bill Cosby impersonation, I was like, that's it. I'm going, I'm going, you know. Now the funny part was on the same audition. They had, they had, they wanted an audition for an announcer for Irish Spring, you know, and and they said you have to have an authentic Irish accent, and you know, whenever I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting dressed, I make sure to put on the Irish Spring, and then <laughs> yes, you'll like it. It keeps you clean as a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Makita, does he wear you out sometimes? Do you think, oh my gosh, I just have to hang my head up and get away from it for a moment? Listen, he's upstairs. I go downstairs. Like, <laughs> I need a break. Right. But yeah. And then what she calls up and goes, tell me a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually do call you. And I'm like, hey, are you going to come downstairs? <laughs> oh, wow. One last question before I leave you, because you're always so generous with your time. Um, and this is kind of a serious note. I read somewhere, Petri, and tell me if this mm -hmm. is true, that 
your dad was troubled and was kind of bounced in and out of prison and, and whatever, but he would call you from there wanting to hear your impersonations of whatever famous person you're impersonating at the time. Is that a true story? Yeah, like my, my dad, well, what, what, what it actually is, is that my dad, when he was home, he would have friends of his call from prison. Uh -huh. And and he would say, "Come here, come here, come here, come here. Uh, do Dean Martin, you know." And I get on the phone and I go, "Everybody, hello, somebody, sometime, you know." And then she, and then he go, "Do Sammy Davis Jr." And I go, "Hey man, uh, how long are you gonna be down in prison, man? Because when you get out, a lot of the cats would love to talk to you." Shebang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm entertained. No, and then, and then, of course, I was young. So, so you know, so my my favorite people to impersonate was sometimes like uh, James Cagney, George Hardy Rat. You're the guy who came and tried to steal my mother. You know, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, where's your Moses now? You know. <laughs> yes, oh, we are. Yes, uh -huh. I'm going to kill you right now. Just remember. Why you there? You know, and so so I do all the gangsters and everything, and, and his friends would just be sitting on the other end of the phone yeah. laughing. Man, you know? look, you two are so fabulous. Um, I I think that we can't wait for bonding with Bird to return. So that's Absolutely. next month in February. That's fantastic. Makita, everybody is joining now in wishing you the absolute best with your recovery. Thank it you. Thank won't you. Won't be far away. And you two are inspiring and fabulous and wonderful. And 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 to you, Petri, such good luck with Tribunal. I know you are going to have fans from all over the world tuning in. And now your special fan yeah. in Iceland. <laughs> that's, that's right. that's right. Well, well, I I actually want to go to Iceland. So you know, so find out who she is. That way, oh, yeah. you know, I can I can just go and knock on the door when I get there. You know, go. Excuse me, Miss. <laughs> Do you know this man? <laughs> You've yes. both got so many fabulous things happening and most important of all, to your very speedy recovery, Makita. It's always such a great time with you, man. We have so much fun talking to you. So much fun. You know? I know. Well, yeah. we'll do it next time and uh, look forward to it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.